it's time for a homebrew Wednesday. I haven't done one in ages. I'm going to kind of do a homebrew Wednesday stroke homebrew review. One that's been a long time coming and I've decided to kind of crack it open and kind of all say what I've been up to a little bit but also a little bit of news. I've had some good news and some bad news as life can be. And um, and it's going to be one from Frank's Homebrew 77. I'm sure that's the name. I've just been watching some of his videos recently. I haven't actually like commented. I'm sure I've thumbs up quite a lot of him building his system with the um, the kegs. He shined them all up. Handy work, man. I didn't I didn't know the, the van was so skilled and that. Um, unfortunate where he was lifting his grain bag and it, and it tore on the handle. I was just like, no, I couldn't believe it. But the system looks amazing and he's done some great bit of welding and kind of made this like rig for it and everything. Excellent. Anyway, I've been holding on to this for ages and it did say Russian Imperial Stout open Christmas 25th of the 12th 15 and I've still got it now. So I'm hoping that it doesn't explode, which brings me onto a, a subject which I'll cover in a minute about exploding beer. But I've had it this long and it's it's well firm. I do have some blue roll handy because I had to do a clear up for something else a minute ago, so we'll see how we go. But I'm confident it's gonna be okay. Pet bottles, funny enough, when you've you know, overcarbonated it, it seems to sustain the uh The initial sort of surge a bit better, I don't know what it is. There's always a little bit rising up. I think it's going to be alright though. It seems quite carbonate, but I think it's going to be alright. I hope this, this high sided glass doesn't affect it too much. I've already had a porter tonight and I would have used my kind of goblet, but it's been in use. Now, I, funny enough, I've got a Russian Imperial Stout from Ham of Home Brew. It's always a good one. I could have side by sided, but I don't think I'm brave enough to do two sort of nine and a half percent beers. I'm guessing. I think this is. I don't know the ABV of this. I'm guessing of like a nine or something like that. Two nine and a half in one night is just not for me. Right, it's dark. It's black. I'm getting a bit of a like a fruity, like a um, what do you call it? Christmas pudding off the nose. Funny enough, I suppose it was meant to be open at Christmas, but anyway, I'm gonna dive in. Oh, that's pretty good. Instantly. Not got an alcohol burn, but you can tell this is a beer that says to you, sip me, don't gulp me, or you'll be in trouble. And funny enough, I had a commercial beer the other night, white name the brewery, and um, a really, really nice beer, fantastic. Um, but I couldn't drink it all to myself, and I'll get onto that subject in a minute. That's another reason I've opened the beer. Um, and it was just too much for me, I just couldn't couldn't finish it. It was really kind of rich. This has kind of got that richness, but I think I'm gonna have a good go at finishing this. But anyway, the reason I opened this bottle, stopped waffling four minutes in, is that I'm gonna be a father again in September. So it's creeping up very soon. So I thought, why not crack this open? I mean, I was gonna actually save it until, you know, the baby was here. I was thinking about that, and then it had almost have been a kind of year since I was told to drink it, but I wanted to do a homebrew Wednesday, say where I've been, and I thought what better time to finally crack this bottle open, because I feel bad for um, Frank, I've done kind of like, all these other people come in and sent me beer and they've been reviewed, but I just kind of knew that that beer would keep sitting there and it would be okay and it would probably just get better in the bottle. So, cheers Frank, I've kind of announced my, my news with the homebrew community with this fantastic beer. And it's a great drop. It's got that kind of 
not what I call it, not that alcoholic night, but that kind of that booziness where like um, the commercial version of, of a beer that I had the other night that was a Russian Imperial Stout, where it had been soaked in kind of like, um, I think that was Jack Daniels um, wooden barrels. This has got that kind of the same sort of taste, but I say boozy. It's not that kind of alcoholic sort of burn, but more of like, it's been kind of matured in some, some sort of oak chip type thing. It's kind of got that taste to it. Carbonation is bang on, despite it kind of surging initially. There's a little widget in these glasses, I believe, the Spiegel out ones, but it's enough to kind of keep the cap there, but it's not got that fizziness. So the battery decided to go. It was on its kind of final warning and it just went. So I haven't drunk too much more. I've had a little sit down with it and that. The head is super creamy on it, but I'm getting up and overwhelming, not overwhelming, but kind of when I sit there and smell it, I get a kind of a note that I can only put down to kind of being like vanilla, like fresh vanilla, kind of just on the, don't get a whole heap of it on the taste, but I get it mainly on the, uh, the aroma. But the body is fantastic. It's kind of got that kind of a little bit like the port I've just had, that creaminess that I don't know, there might be some oats in it or something like that. Give it a little bit of a, a creaminess to it. Silky smooth, I have to admit. It's you know, it's up there with Hammer Home Brews Imperial Stout, which I you know, I put quite highly. Again, if it was in a you know, commercial bottle with a label on it, you'd know no different. That is a, a fantastic beer, so hats off to Frank. So, um, a little bit of a, a kind of a little bit of a roundup. So, obviously, the good news of that, um, that will be my third child. Um, yeah, I kind of changed jobs a little bit. I, I left the job of, I think I was there about 15 years quite happy, quite what's name, and an opportunity came up to join a commercial brewery. Um, yeah, I kind of, it was all good for a while. Um, I worked there about two months, just under, funny enough, um, but was currently working my notice, but it's kind of come to an end. I may divulge more in another video one day, I don't know. But for me at this point in time, it's, I don't know, it doesn't feel right to kind of, what's the word, air your, uh, air your laundry, I guess, in public kind of thing. So, yeah, so I was kind of, you know, a bit of a downer because it was kind of living the dream for a brief period and then it's, you know, back to reality. But fortunately, I've got another job which is close to home and, you know, I'm hoping everything's going to work out pretty well. Um, certainly need a job with another one on the way. Anyway, that aside, um, I've got tons of stuff to upload. There's kind of, you know, when I was working at the commercial brewery, it is busy. Don't, you know, there's no doubt about it. If you are thinking of starting a brewery or you already work one, you know it's it's hard work. And I was under no illusions of that. You know, it's you know, it's the same as home brewing. Most of it is cleaning, and there's a lot more to it than just that. But it's yeah, it's tough work, but it is good. It's good fun. Um, for the most part. Um, yeah, I've got commercial beer reviews to do. I've got a few snack reviews. I just did one tonight, which was quite an interesting one. Haven't really homebrew related stuff. I've just brewed up the Kutch, the um, the Welsh Red Ale from Tiny Rebel Brewing. The one that won the beer of the beer of Britain in the Great British Beer Festival thing. Um, I brewed up a, a fresh walk kit from the Malt Miller, an American Pale Ale. That's in the bottles, um, went to condition. Um, I did just have, actually before I did this video and the video before it, I had a disaster of a commercial beer that's bottomed out in, in my wardrobe where I store my beers and it has just kind of gone everywhere. It's just annihilated the bottom of my wardrobe. 
And what's really funny about the other day, I saw someone else, I can't remember if it was, broke their Spiegel hourglass. Like one of these super thin ones. And um, I see a lot of people break them with that. And I'm not smug about it at all. I haven't broken mine since I've got them. And I know it's going to happen one day, I just know it is. And the other day I was sitting there thinking, part of the fact that I haven't broken it, and everyone breaks theirs at the sink and all that lot, is the fact that I've got the original box they came in. So they all go back in the box and kept nicely and all that lot. Anyway, to my horror, when this commercial beer exploded, it's like those boxes that the beers are stored in have soaked it up like a sponge. So they are just wrecked. Um, luckily I've managed to repurpose an old box that beer come in to kind of store the glasses and segment them and that, you know. I mean, I don't know, it's probably my fault that I don't have a lot of space to store all my beer, so my commercial beer is going next to where I store my beer glasses and things like that, and it's at the bottom of my wardrobe, literally where my clothes are, my shoes and whatnot, so quite fortunate not to have ruined anything else, but slightly peeved at the fact that a commercial beer has kind of like clearly been overcarbonated, and it was the one beer, like, all the beers were great, and I'm still looking forward to drinking the rest, but it was a double stout, and I was like, I'm looking forward to that one going out of focus there a little bit and um, to find that it's it's like exploded and I can't drink it now it's just like a nightmare so anyway you know that's that's a bit of my, my woes I ordered a new auto siphon funny enough I popped round to Hammer Phone Brews and he had the same one sitting on his cat's up where it's kind of got that kind of that bit now where the plastic doesn't kind of bend round but a little L piece is on there um, I need to get some new plastic fermenters. I've got the Brutec fermenter, which is fantastic, but I still use, sometimes I do two batches and there's different beers going on. I like to have a plastic fermenter as well. Um, with beer kits, you can't really put that in the Brutec because you've got to mix it up and with the, the cone for the um, yeast and whatnot, the conical bottom, it's just too much aggro for beer kit, so it's like a plastic bucket is the best thing. And um, due to some, like, I don't know, I think every now and then some of your kit should be like changed. I mean, my oil siphon has been going years. I mean, I suppose my 23 litre oil siphon is the one I've always had, which is probably a really bad thing. It's just asking for trouble. So I thought I'd get a new one. They're quite inexpensive. They seem to some stuff seems to have come down in price now to what it was. Fermenters are always cheap. You know, it's just worth changing some of this stuff every now and then. And this one was about I think it was about 13 quid, and it come with the clip. I've never had the clip. I'm hoping it works on some of my buckets because some of the buckets are quite thick because it's always a pain in the arse holding it and whatnot. So that's probably my, my only sort of real home brewing purchase and that. I'd love to get the SS Brewtech 10 litre. Um, Rock on Beer's just got his. I think it's fantastic. It's just the money. It's just like all that money for a small bit of stainless steel when it almost a little bit more. It's like the, the, the 9 litre corners. They're fantastic, don't get me wrong. But you're paying almost as much as that as you are for a big one, but needs must. And when you're doing small batches, and you know, sometimes you just gotta spend the money to get the good stuff. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, I did catch up with Hammer Home Brew, pop round there on Saturday of last week. Uh, long overdue, hadn't seen him for a while. Um, got a couple of beers that Ben had left, done some reviews on them. Picked up a Hammer Home Brew Russian Imperial. Um, and the one thing that he had, he's got this kind of, um, what's it called, a summer house um, for all his beer stuff and that, fantastic, it's like a proper man cave, it's just amazing, the shed space was just fantastic, I could have just sat in there for the, the rest of the night, but I had to go home at some point, um, but he had golden stag on tap, and I must admit, there's something about that beer, other beer kits taste like, some beer kits taste like that beer kit twang, um, I think brew firm you can always detect, um, but golden stag. There's something about it where it just kind of it, it it's got a load of hops in it that kind of disguise a lot of the the I guess the poor points of some kits I guess. But golden stag in bottle I think it tastes even better on tap. Hamfram brew seems to think my version was good in the bottle, but the, the one he had on tap was just exactly as I remembered it when I drunk it that I made it out of a bottle and it was just like you know when you get that that kind of it's like visiting an old friend literally so to speak um you get your first gulp and you're like oh that's that's really good and for just a kit it's probably one of the best beer kits out there I think just because of the hoppiness that's in it 
really kind of hides that kind of twang that you ever get in a beer kit. And on a keg and poured cold into a, a glass and it's like the first beer of the day. Fantastic. And I had another one before I left that I didn't get to finish. Um, I got me, I was kind of getting a little bit on my way by then. We did a, uh, we shared a beer, a Saison from Baldy Home Brew Adam, which was fantastic, I have to admit. Um, I don't think I could have drunk a whole pint. I probably would have like fell over on my way out of uh, Hamilton Home Brew's house. Um, but yeah, that, that you know, I, was, I didn't get to finish my, my other half of um, Golden Stag, but we had a wild river in between the Fullers. Um, funny enough, we had a Sierra Nevada, but we both agreed it just wasn't quite as good as what we remembered it. I think we've been spoilt for all the other hoppy beers that are out there now and that. But Golden Stag, I think if you if you haven't done a beer kit before, and it, and you want to put a beer kit on a on a keg, and I, I think even some of the the, the poorer beer kits taste. Every, I think any beer tastes better on keg. That's a fact without a doubt. You you know the there's a saying you can't polish a turd, but you can you can make some of them beer kits taste a whole lot better. But I think Golden Stag's pretty much good in bowl or keg, but on keg, I think, oh man, it was just fantastic. I don't know how he's managed to keep, I don't know how much he's got in that keg, but that would have been gone if it was mine. It's just like, it is a great beer. You know, it's cold, it's hoppy, it's, you know, and it's it's weird, it's like you can drink it and you know that it's Golden Stag. It might, I wonder if the, the Razorback's quite similar, but mine went wrong, I think Hammer Home Brews went wrong. Never got to try that one, but Golden Stag for me is like the, you know, if you where he is, if where he is your kind of session bitter, Golden Stag is your is your hoppy beer kit one, fantastic. So, you know, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's it's waffled on. So, I'll, I'm going to do some more Homebrew Wednesdays and divulge more information at another time. But it's just a quick, you know, I'm kind of still around and going to do some more videos soon. Hopefully, get a bit more content out there now that I'm may have a little bit more time on my hand so cheers and cheers to frank this is a stunning beer i'm going to go and finish it and uh, sit there and enjoy it for the rest of the evening cheers